Day 271, suck it up. In this dialogue, Julie uses the expression suck it up when Mike discusses the challenges of his new training program, prompting him to ask what it means. Julie explains that it involves enduring difficult situations without giving up. Here comes the dialogue. This conversation helps understand the expression and its use in encouraging resilience and perseverance. This new training program at work is really tough. I'm not sure I can keep up. You can do it, Mike. Sometimes you just have to suck it up. Suck it up? What does that mean? It means you have to endure the hardship and keep going, even if it's difficult. I see. It's just hard to stay motivated. I know it's tough, but it'll be worth it in the end. Just try to stay positive and push through. You're right. I shouldn't complain so much. Everyone feels overwhelmed sometimes, but you're not alone. We're all in this together. Thanks, Julie. I really appreciate the pep talk. Anytime. And if you ever need to vent, I'm here to listen. Thanks. That means a lot. I'll try to keep my chin up and just get through it. Day 272. I'll take your word for it. In this dialogue, Jane uses the phrase, I'll take your word for it when discussing the recommendation from Kevin, leading Kevin to ask about its meaning. Jane explains that it expresses trust in someone's opinion without needing further proof. This conversation helps understand how to convey trust based on another's suggestion in English. Here comes the dialogue. Kevin, I tried that new Thai restaurant you recommended. It was really good. Told you. The pad Thai is out of this world, isn't it? Honestly, I was skeptical at first, but now I'm a believer. They also have great mango sticky rice. You should try it next time. I'm not usually a fan of sweet dishes for dessert. Just trust me on this one. It's exceptional. All right. I'll take your word for it. What does I'll take your word for it mean? It means I believe you and will trust your judgment, even though I haven't experienced it myself. Great, you won't regret it. I hope you're right. I'll try the mango sticky rice next time then. Day 273. I don't know how to make up the loss. In this dialogue, Mike expresses his concern about not knowing how to compensate for budget cuts using the phrase, I don't know how to make up the loss. Julie asks for clarification on this expression, and Mike explains it means finding a way to recover lost resources. This conversation helps understand expressions related to addressing financial challenges. Here comes the dialogue. Julie, have you heard about the budget cuts at work? Yes, I just found out. It's really worrying. Her department lost a significant amount of funding. I don't know how to make up the loss. What do you mean by make up the loss? It means I'm not sure how to compensate for or recover the funds we lost. That's a tough spot to be in. Have you thought about any solutions yet? We're considering a few options, like reducing expenses or seeking alternative funding sources. That sounds like a good start. Maybe hosting a fundraiser could help, too. That's an interesting idea. I hadn't thought of that. Let's brainstorm more about this and see if we can come up with a plan together. I appreciate that, Julie. Thanks for helping me think this through. Day 274, what's the catch? In this dialogue, Kevin uses the expression, what's the catch? When Jane mentions a seemingly great phone plan or prompting Jane to ask for an explanation, Kevin explains that it refers to an expected downside or hidden condition in a deal that seems too good to be true. This conversation helps understand how to express skepticism and inquire about potential pitfalls in English. Here comes the dialogue. Kevin, have you seen this new phone plan being advertised? Unlimited data at such a low price. Sounds too good to be true. What's the catch? What do you mean by what's the catch? I mean, there must be some hidden downside or condition with such an offer. Oh, I get it. Let me check the details again. Usually there are extra fees or a long contract. You're right. It says here, the price is only for the first six months. There it is. Always something to look out for with deals like that. Thanks for pointing that out. I almost jumped right in without reading the fine print. Always a good idea to dig a little deeper with these things. Definitely. I'll be more cautious next time. Day 275. I'll stick my neck out and co-sign your loan. In this dialogue, Mike offers to help Julie by saying he will stick his neck out and co-sign her loan, leading Julie to ask for clarification of the phrase. Mike explains that it means he's willing to take a personal risk to support her. This conversation helps understand expressions related to taking risks and offering support in English. Here comes the dialogue. Julie, 
I know you've been struggling to get that business loan approved. Yeah, it's been tough. The banks are hesitant because I'm a first-time business owner. I've been thinking, I'll stick my neck out and co-sign your loan. Really? But what do you mean by stick your neck out? It means I'm taking a risk or putting myself in a vulnerable position to help you. Mike, that's incredibly generous, but I can't let you take such a risk for me. I believe in your business idea, Julie. I want to help make it happen. I appreciate it so much, but I need to think about it. I don't want to jeopardize your finances. I understand your concern, but let's talk about all the details and see if it makes sense. Okay, we can discuss it further. Thank you for even considering this, Mike. You're welcome. Let's try to find a way to make it work.